here's the next question from Jeanette. Hi Neil, I'm just wondering what more we can do to bring forward some news on the new WHO regulations that we seem to be sliding towards. This is not a positive move for this country at all and I'm concerned about the political silence on this matter. Can you expand on this subject and let me know what you think about it? Yes, there's a, there's a, there are proposals to um, amend the, the IHR, the International Health Regulations, which are kind of a, appended to the, the pandemic treaty, the World Health Organization uh, Pandemic Preparedness Treaty, and, and the IHR is associated with that. And there are, there are, there are amendments that have been, uh, that have been proposed, and I think it's December this year is, I think, is the deadline for it. And it, it'll happen by default. You know, the, the way in which it can be for an individual nation state like Britain would have to kind of like opt out. It, it, it's a it's a it's a by default opt in. If they don't do anything, all the all the members, I don't know, 190 member states. And if 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 all of them just sit back, then these uh, amendments will come into force and there's no sign yet of anyone in Britain any elected representatives saying no we will we won't abide by these regulations because they're, they're very very far reaching the, hypothetically it empowers the WHO now the representative the people in the WHO are not elected they're unaccountable uh, unknown to 99% of the population of the planet and they would be making uh, unchallengeable decisions about, they can decide that this is a, an, a, a global health emergency and they don't have to tell anybody on what grounds they've decided to declare an emergency. They can just like, you know, pull the, pull the red cord on emergency and having declared an emergency, hypothetically, they would be able to demand whatever USA or UK or any other member state would uh, would uh, would do what it was told by the WHO when it comes to say producing a new medical product or or in or enforcing a lockdown on citizens uh, and you know and, and hypothetically that the 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 new the, the amendments could enable mandated medical procedures for everyone so it's it's worrying in the extreme, and wh when people have raised the spectre of it and challenged it in in the past months, they tend to get told, "Oh, there's nothing legally binding. It's nothing legally binding. There's nothing nothing will will tell a, the UK government or the you know, the USA or or the Australian government to do these things. It, it will only be advisory." But there's a school of thought that says, "No, on the contrary, this is a this will have the force of." So of the force of law, and and, and at the very least, whether, whatever, at the very least, there are a lot of people who want this openly discussed and debated and and properly aired, but it's not happening. People have been writing petitions and writing to their MPs and whatever, and it's all just all of those demands or and or requests for more information and for a challenge to be made to it and or, an opt out is just falling into a black hole, never to return. I've been worried about it. A lot of people around me are very worried about it. But if you, if you're, if the elected representatives, if the government won't act, it's difficult to know what what might meaningfully be done. Except, well, let, let's imagine that the the amendments are written into law, and we are subject to them. What civil disobedience is it? Is that what it is? A diktat would come down from the World Health Organization, would just come down to individuals acting independently or in groups to say, well, no, not locking down or I'm not taking that. It's anybody's guess at the moment. It's a very upsetting, troubling grey area. And I know you said the WHO aren't elected, but That's right. who who are they and where do they get their money from then? Well they're 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 um they appoint each other. Uh, the World Health Organization, the largest funder of the World Health Organization is the Bill and M Melinda Gates Foundation, together with Gavi, 
GAVI, which is also funded by Bill Gates. Uh, so that makes Bill Gates the biggest single sponsor of the World Health Organization, which obviously gives him a great deal of clout. He's paying for it. You know, whoever pays the piper calls the tune. So he's got great influence over the World Health Organization. And likewise, he is, he's just a private individual. He's not elected by anyone. He's not answerable to anyone. But, you know, hypothetically, he has the power to say to the WHO, I want this done. And the WHO would do it. And they appoint one another. Uh, they're, they're based in, uh, in, in Switzerland. Uh, they're, they're operatives. They're, they're people don't pay tax. They, 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 they live in that kind of rarefied sort of diplomatic immunity type, um, you know, bubble. And uh, it's, it's deeply troubling. But you can't get rid of them. They're not, they're, they don't come up for election. They're not answerable to you or me or anybody else. To me, it all falls into that worrying area of um, stakeholder capitalism, you know, which is that notion that's promulgated by Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. I mean, there's another bunch of unelected, unaccountable, anonymous, invisible individuals uh, who are taking it upon themselves to influence policy around the world. Uh, but stakeholder capitalism is this idea of bringing together government and corporations so that the decisions affecting all of our lives are, are moved up to a level that we can't affect. You know, so it's basically the world is run by the boardrooms of of transnational corporations like BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard, uh, you know, working in league with the, you know, the, 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 the international banking community. And they're just behind closed doors without the need to, publicise what they're doing or to or to report to us would make decisions about how the world is run. And and the and this with the, the World Health Organization making these amendments awarding power unto itself I think it's insane. I think it's insane. I can't believe it's happening, but it's happening. And I, I, su I suppose it, it comes after long periods of general apathy on the part of populations who can't, can't be bothered with running things. You know, it's the way in which local, it starts at a kind of local council level. You know, how, what, what percentage of the population bothers to stand for office in their local council, their local parish council, or their local district or county council? You're far less bothering to stand to be a prospective parliamentary candidate on the part of a political party. How many people bother with that? There's a general, oh, somebody else will do that, you know. Somebody else will make sure the lights come on and the bins are emptied and I can't be bothered with that. And in the darkness, in that, in that greyness, <laughs> evil has grown <laughs> and vested interests have decided, well, there's a lot of power just kind of lying about the floor here. Let's scoop it up. Do something with it. And so while we were sleeping, so to speak, uh, those that can be bothered for their own reasons have scooped up all the power. And suddenly the, the mass of the population, or some of the mass of the population is looking over and thinking, hang on, how, how, how are they able to do that? Well, you didn't want to do anything about it for 50 years. And now we've got it all. It's a bit like that.